couple of years ago, we redesigned the network uh, to cope with future demands. And what we actually did was reduce our footprint. Uh, we were in a lot of locations in Amsterdam, which are a major hub for the network. And we, we brought it back to three major sites and deployed them with the biggest machine we could find. Um, reducing our power consumption from 0.8 watts per gigabit to 0.1 watts per gigabit. And because we just have three locations, we could remove most of the OTN equipment and all the additional stuff, uh, further reducing our power footprint. So two, three years ago, we deployed this and we actually see a lot of benefits. from it. We worked with Nokia to, to deploy the, the, the FP5 technology all over the network, not just for the 800G technology. Uh, we also did it to be more reliable for their actually, uh, we're changing more to a business exchange than a traditional internet exchange, which um, our customers demands more reliability. So we have to provide the five nines, uh, uh, but also uh, um, demand uh, evil uh, performance on demand. So the customer comes and it not, we have to rebuild and in six months times you get your capacity. Uh, the customer calls and within 10 working days we have to, to, to deliver. So by deploying FP5 all over the network, uh, that makes us uh, uh, capable of doing that. Our approach in, in supplying security for, for, for DDoS uh, protection, um, well, that's actually a very funny thing because on exchanges, we don't see that much DDoSs. We do get a lot of questions from customers to help us in, in preparation for uh, that inevitable event that they're under attack. Um, so we are looking with Nokia to, uh, to change over and, and use the FP5 capabilities we have in the network uh, uh, to make that available for all customers connected. The threat of quantum computing is very interesting. Um, but also a little bit like the DDoS problem, not really a problem for an exchange. So Annelique's point of view on, 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 on dealing with encryption, because that's your quantum problem, um, is we advise customers that we won't do it for them. Because if you're serious about encryption, you should do it yourself. And we can help them with the transport, we can do OT4 transport or um, uh, clear Ethernet pipes for them so they can do it, but they should do it themselves. And yeah, of course, we do have customers that want just a tick in the box uh, so they can uh, complete with the RFP or anything else they are doing. So we have customers that we provide it for, but um, our real point of view is you, if you have a quantum threat, you should take care of it. And people can help you, customers, if all companies can help you with it, but you should do it and not shift the problem to somebody else. Well, AI for my network means um, we can help uh, our engineers uh, be better uh, and not take over. Uh, that's our main, main, main focus. AI can uh, take care of the, the jobs you don't want to do. Uh, the repetitive jobs. We're actually working on a small project uh, uh, to get all the maintenance notifications from all our suppliers, parse them through a large language model and just uh, make the calendar events for it. Because nobody wants to go to the mailbox and filter all the, all the, uh, all the maintenance announcements for it. It's a horrible job. So uh, our point of view uh, is actually from we don't want AI to do the cool stuff, like uh, the designing and the painting so that our engineers can do the horrible stuff, but turn it around. Let AI do the horrible stuff so that our engineers are enabled to do all the, the, the creative stuff and all the, the awesome stuff. Um, so that's how we look at AI. Yeah.